Probably the most sought after big game in all the history of Africa is the elephant. And the reason is quite apparent, for these outsized giants literally carry a gold mine in their teeth, a gold mine of ivory. From all over the world, hunters come to Africa, risk their lives matching wits with these outsized creatures, largest mammals roaming the face of the earth today. For my adventure album comes a true story of an encounter with these unpredictable giants of the African veldt. So stand by for adventure. Although massive and clumsy in appearance, contrary to popular belief, the elephant is amazingly agile and most quiet when walking through the jungle. It's not uncommon for a herd to pass within 50 or 60 yards of the camp without making its presence known to anyone. And they're great travelers too. They'll travel 50 or 75 miles in a single day. I know, for I've tracked many a herd of elephants. And one time in tracking a herd, I was rewarded by a sight that's seldom seen by hunters. But let's start at the beginning. It was a typical summer day in the southern part of Kenya Colony, British East Africa. Not having anything better to do, I started out cross country in search of adventure. As usual, there were the common varieties of game, a herd of water bucks. And always there's that sports model jackass, the zebra. And one never finds the zebra without finding his old running mate, the wildebeest. That long-necked, inquisitive friend of theirs, the giraffe. And always there's the Tommy Gazelle, that plentiful, curious little fellow with the windshield wiper tail. This day I was treated to a rare sight, a small herd of sable antelope, those magnificent trophies with the long, back-swept horns. Some hunters consider the sable antelope the finest of all trophies that the dark continent offers. And always one has to be on the lookout for the treachery of the Cape Buffalo bull. There's the fellow that's never to be trusted, vindictive, treacherous. So when one goes cross country in Africa, he is always looking, always questing, hoping that he might see something a bit unusual. And this particular day, Almost like a statue standing in front of me, I found the unusual. There was a huge bull elephant right out in the middle of the open veldt, busily chewing its cud, completely oblivious to my presence. And one never finds an elephant alone. Where there's one elephant, there are usually more. And so I checked my rifle to make sure there was a cartridge in the barrel, and then I began to follow. For this fellow just might lead me to a herd where I could get some excellent pictures. And even when an elephant is just walking cross country, it's all a man can do to keep up with it. They move at an amazing pace, cover great distances, 50, 75, 100 miles in a single day. And several times I cut cross country to catch up with him forgot about the wind, and at one time he must have caught a scent of me, because he suddenly gave forth with a sort of half-hearted charge, probably more to frighten me off than to do me bodily harm. I realized that now he knew I was following him, he would shortly outdistance me. Nevertheless, I followed on. Several miles farther, I came upon the trail of the whole herd of elephants, a whole swath of devastation laid before me. Trees uprooted, limbs broken off, branches pulled down, bark shredded from the trunks of trees. A swath fully 50 yards wide of devastation looked almost like a cyclone had hit the area, showing that the herd of elephants had passed and fed here. Here and there were small balls of sisal fiber. The elephant takes the size of the leaves and chews them until all the nutrient value is gone, wads up the cellulose and spits that out, and then moves on. For several miles I followed this swath of devastation, and then I realized the elephants were headed in a particular direction. From the direction the trees were trampled, I surmised the herd was headed for a water hole some distance off. I lost no time in getting back into my jeep and headed cross country in the same direction. Well back from the watering spot, I park the jeep.
slung my rifle over my shoulder, picked up my camera, and stalked on up in the water hole with the hopes that I might record some pictures of a herd of elephants watering. A short distance from the water hole, at a strategic spot, I leaned my rifle against the tree. And then I stalked a couple of feet closer and set up my camera in readiness. So far as I could see by first glance, there were no elephants present. But hardly did I get the camera set up when I saw a mighty bull mounting the far bank of the water hole. Nervously swayed back and forth, looking, listening, testing the air, swinging his trunk from side to side, and then suddenly gave forth with a tremendous shrill bellow. And the blare was answered from adjacent to me, and then from the opposite side. And then from all around, elephant began to converge on the water hole, as though they had been waiting for their leader to sound the all clear signal. From my vantage point, I watched the elephant as they came down and began to quench their thirst. I knew this was the only water hole within 50 or 100 miles, and elephants from the entire area must have suddenly decided to congregate there and water all at one time. There were big ones and little ones, and there were tuskers and tuskless, all interested in one thing, quenching their thirst. Elephants have the biggest ears in all Christendom and the poorest hearing. They have huge eyes, but they have 4F vision. But with that long proboscis of theirs, that long nose, they have one of the world's most keenly developed senses of smell, I do believe. I knew so long as the wind continued in my favor, I could rather safely continue taking pictures. And so I edged ever closer and closer. And my efforts were not completely unrewarded. I saw such things that the elephants did there as no man has previously seen. I saw the elephants dancing. I saw them cavorting, splashing in the mud, spraying each other, playing like a bunch of youngsters in a mud bath. And then wanting to get still closer, I abandoned my camera and my tripod, too heavy to carry, and I took a smaller camera and went still closer. The elephants seemed completely oblivious to my presence. They continued to quench their thirst, siphoning up great snoots full of water and pouring it into their mouths. And I continued to go closer and closer and closer. Seeing how easy it was to get this close to the elephants, I must have abandoned all caution. At least I became careless and I forgot to look behind me. And while I was busy watching an elephant, a sixth sense must have warned me to look back. I looked behind me and sure enough, there was a huge big tusker, slowly but methodically coming toward me. This called for a strategic retreat. And then he came closer and closer. I struggled with my camera and finally had to abandon it and rush for the tree and climbed as quickly as I could, high into the branches, where I felt for certain the elephant couldn't reach me. But he kept coming right to the very base of the tree and very nervously crossed and uncrossed his legs. They sounded the alarm and all the elephants came plodding out of the watering hole. Rushing around the frightened elephant, rushing around the base of the tree, blaring wildly. I realized that at my vantage point high above their heads, the wind must be carrying my scent well over their heads because they were only a few yards away and yet they apparently didn't know just where I was. But I knew just a stray vagrant breeze had to carry a single scent of me to the herd and then immediately they would charge the tree, knock it down and plop me into the very dust. The only thing to do was to watch my opportunity, sneak down and retrieve my rifle, just in case I needed it. And then I saw one elephant that looked for certain like he was looking for trouble. So I carefully crawled down the tree, retrieved my rifle, and just in the nick of time, I raised the rifle as I saw the elephant advance. 
And then I knew that a charge was imminent. And I held a rifle in readiness. Then he charged. At the sound of my shot, the elephants scattered in all directions. As I watched the last of the herd disappear into the jungle, I carefully climbed back down the tree. When an elephant charges, there is no choice. It's either kill or be killed. For as I approached, I could see that my rifle had done its duty and saved my life at the end of my ivory trail. It's time again to close my adventure album, but I'm looking forward to the chance of joining you for another chapter of intrigue and danger from some far off corner of the world. And until then, this is Wallace Tabor thanking you for joining us and wishing you the best of luck on your adventure trail.